Hi, and welcome back to the Sussex Election Show. I'm Michael Edwards, and this is Zoe Knowles, and uh, we're excited to be here with you today. Uh, we're a week, just a little over a week uh, in a bit, maybe, mm -hmm. um, away from the writ dropping, or when we think the writ is going to drop in this election. Uh, I think the target date is September 16th is mm -hmm. the last day that the writ can drop. So mm -hmm. that's more than likely uh, what will happen. I mean, uh, if I were the government, I'd want to use my last days <laughs> as productively as possible to get my message out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a special show for you today. Uh, a lot of the slogans and new TV ads for each of the major parties have been released. And uh, today we're going to take a look at them, uh, share our thoughts and watch them with you. And uh, it's just a great way to set up ahead of the, uh, the kickoff of the official election period. Mm -hmm. Um, so, Zoe, do you have any thoughts heading into this last week or two before the writ drops? Mm -hmm. I think that in the last few days before the official election period starts, it's a great moment to assess how each of the parties are looking. Um, how have they been using uh, the past few weeks or months wisely? Um, how are they looking uh, for, their, for their voters? And how strong are they in comparison to the other parties? And I think analyzing their uh, official ads and slogans is a really great insight into how each of these parties are feeling. For sure. And I mean, for me, uh, you know, one metric, the main metric I think a lot of people look to, especially over the summer period, are the poll numbers, right? Mm -hmm. And we've seen uh, some consistency, but I think more inconsistency uh, in terms of the polling. I think a combination of that is, you know, the uh, news cycle. So when it's more mm -hmm. favorable to the liberals, we'll see a little bit of a spike for Justin Trudeau and his team. Um, and when it's obviously more favorable to the conservatives, then we see Andrew Scheer's team bump up. Mm -hmm. um, but also, we've had days, I think, over the summer where the polls have told two different stories, right? And really, what that tells me, I think, is that there's still that time for our Canadians to form an opinion and solidify mm -hmm. that opinion in terms of what their preferences are. And so I really feel that the message that comes across in these first wave of ads is a good indicator of where the parties feel they need to be going mm -hmm. and how they really want to start to frame that ballot question. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, before we get into them, is there anything kind of, uh, I guess, out there in the, uh, you know, in social media or happening in the news that has caught your eye in the last week or two as something to watch? Well, um, of course, for the Conservatives, uh, the 2005 video that uh, res was resurfaced of Andrew Scheer uh, sharing his opinions on same-sex marriage and his subsequent, I think we can all agree, uh, uh, poor communications management of that video coming out. Um, he took eight days away from the campaign uh, and then tried to give his, give his thoughts on the video in a press conference rather than a longer term sit down interview where he could more clearly uh, articulate his thoughts and his feelings on it. Uh, I think that that's an important, an important backdrop for looking at the conservatives as we head into the official election period. Yeah, and without being too critical, I mean that eight day gap, the, main, the major thing that really happened there was it gave the opportunity to the liberals to follow up with mm -hmm. uh, his comments on same sex marriage. Mm -hmm. So really kind of uh, uh, on abortion and mm -hmm. uh, it really, uh, kind of brought together a couple of themes that are, you know, the third rail of politics, I think, especially for conservatives in 2019, which are these social conservative mm -hmm. issues. And I mean, under Stephen Harper's government and leadership, those issues, uh, particularly, I think, in the last four years of his term were things that conservatives really were able to move past and mm -hmm. uh, not have them define, be defined in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, just that gap in time between when it happened and then the eight days later, mm -hmm. um, it gave an unnecessary, unnecessary opening, I think, for that conversation to really grow. Mm -hmm. um, but do you think, and I mean, some of these ads, uh, you see two really different types of ads, I think, over the course of a campaign. You see the very polished, professional, mm -hmm. lots of time, lots of thought ad. And then you see the kind of quick and dirty, rapid response ad. Yeah. Um, these ads here are the ones that have just come out that we're going to take a look at. They're more of the former. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I'm curious, uh, do you see any type of response uh, to some of that issue in this advertising? Or do you think that the conservatives are moving forward with their game plan from you know, a month ago or two months ago in terms of how they want to frame uh, this election? So I would say that, uh, and when we take a look at the conservative ad in a few moments, we see that uh, he's clearly trying to focus his campaign and the election on uh, an economic message. Uh, the, the conservative slogan is, it's time for you to get ahead, really focusing on people who are working very hard and despite the progress that they're seeing in other parts of the country, they just can't seem to feel that progress themselves. Uh, and I would say that for Andrew Scheer in particular, staying on that economic focus is going to be very important for his campaign. No, that makes sense. Well, uh, why don't we get right into it? And mm -hmm. since we've been talking a little bit about Andrew Scheer, maybe we want to start mm -hmm. with uh, his ad first. Great. So let's get that up. My plan for Canadians, lower the cost of living and leave more money in your pockets. I believe that Canadians across this country are so frustrated because they're working so hard and they're following all the rules, but they feel like they're falling further and further behind or that they're barely getting by. I have a plan to lower the cost of living to make life more affordable, to leave more money in the pockets of Canadians for their kids, for themselves, or for their aging parents. Because it's time for you to get ahead. All right, so it's time for you to get ahead. Um, what are your, what's your take on the slogan? I think the slogan, you know, it's, it's a little bit wordy, but I think the message is clear um, that no matter how much progress you see, uh, in other parts of the country and no matter how uh, you see Canada portrayed on the international stage, you still can't quite feel that yourself. You know, there, there are still uh, lots of people across the country um, and I think in particular he's speaking to uh, the people of Calgary right now um, who are not quite feeling that progress that um, the Liberals are saying uh, that, you know, look at all the great work that we've done thus far. Um, let's continue that, that progress. Let's continue that great work. And I think that Andrew Shear is speaking to the people who are saying, you know what, I'm not feeling that great work. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I see where they're going with it for sure. I think uh, the, one of the challenges maybe they might have with that slogan is just when you look, when you take a look back, how uh, bad do Canadians think things are mm -hmm. right now? Right. Like, I mean, Canada was just ranked one of the top countries uh, to live in in, mm -hmm. the, in the world quality of life. Um, I think, generally speaking, the economy feels favorable to consumers. Um, there's definitely challenges, but I wonder if, you know, getting directly to a message of, uh, you know, pocketbook politics. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not directly that in the slogan, but he touches upon it in the ad for sure, you know, for your parents and your kids and you to get ahead. Um, I wonder if that's where the pulse of, of Canadians are. And it's interesting that you mention Alberta. Um, obviously, uh, issues around uh, oil and energy have uh, really been impactful. Pipeline mm -hmm. issues have been impactful to economy, and I'm sure a lot of people um, are definitely feeling it more so. Um, but I really view this election as something that can be won or lost in Ontario. Mm -hmm. And so when you have this new uh, majority PC government in Ontario, um, you gotta, you gotta ask how effective is that message? Mm -hmm. And if people aren't feeling like they're getting ahead, is that a criticism of the conservative brand a little bit in Ontario where votes really need to mm -hmm. be won? Um, but overall, when we look at the ad, you know, it's Andrew, uh, well lit, I mm -hmm. guess, uh, some bright lights and a green backdrop. Um, I wonder if that's intentional in any way. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to bring through, you know, he, he came out with uh, these papers on climate change early on. Um, we won't get into, you know, what we think about his climate change plan, um, at least not in this episode. <laughs> um, but it, it, I feel like it's a, a subtle indicator of, you know, that conservative uh, brand trying to feel a little bit mm -hmm. more open and bring in this green element without having to talk about, uh, you know, those issues. And I wonder if that's trying to strike some type of parity or balance on an issue where uh, the liberals feel that they're, they're particularly strong. Um, mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think that um, 
having that, that nature backdrop, um, having this be a very subdued ad, uh, and lines like, put more money in your pocket. I think that those are very clear uh, signifiers about his carbon tax uh, policy uh, for completely removing a, a carbon tax. Um, the idea that, you know, uh, if Canadians feel that they uh, are better managers of their money, then they should have it back in their pocket, uh, which is, you know, clearly what his message is, uh, which uh, I, I think it's interesting if you're looking at Shears, the Conservatives ad stylistically, um, especially in comparison with uh, the Liberal ad, which we'll see in a few minutes. Um, as you said, you know, he's sitting in a room, he's got this green uh, nature backdrop, he's looking at the camera, um, he's, you know, just talking, he's not interacting with a lot of people. Uh, I think it's a very subdued ad. Uh, and I think that there are a few things that they might have, you know, a few style, uh, stylistic edits that I would have made. Um, for example, in the beginning of the ad, even though uh, his name is, is uh, written at the bottom of the screen, he doesn't actually introduce himself. Um, and I think that, uh, especially when you're mm. running against Justin Trudeau, who has that really strong yeah, name recognition, for sure. um, I think that's something that Andrew Scheer could have could have kept a bit more in mind. I think uh, that's that's a really great point. I think it's really valid because when you look online, the conservatives, like all of the material, well, not all, but most of the material that they're putting out, their social media ads, um, paid media online, it's all very negative, mm -hmm. right? It's not really focused on building the Andrew Scheer brand. Mm -hmm. It's more focused on tearing down the Justin Trudeau brand. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have this ad that comes out and like I've seen this ad a bunch on, you know, TSN uh, and like on TV, just casually watching. And it's very clear that they're trying to define Andrew Scheer mm -hmm. and they're trying to define him, obviously, in a positive light as, uh, you know, a friendly guy who's here for you kind mm -hmm. of thing. And uh, he's going to help you get ahead. Right. Yeah. But not mentioning who he is. I feel like that is a little bit of an oversight because I think for a lot of people, either if he is defined to, he's probably been defined in a negative way. And if he has not been defined, you don't really know very much mm -hmm. about him. So going right to the message and then using other channels to just kind of attack Trudeau, I feel like there's a little bit of a missed opportunity to introduce Andrew. And I know there have been ads like, uh, I mean, who can forget the ad of that kind of goofy park ad mm -hmm. and like the, the short sleeve shirt. Um, I, which I wasn't very much a fan of. I guess like that, in a way, could have introduced you to Andrew Scheer. But it's not gotten, it's not going to have nearly the play that these ads in this period with the amount of spending and dollars behind them will have. So it's an interesting gap. Um, and, you know, just to jump in on that, uh, what the liberals are trying to do right now um, is, is to define Andrew Scheer and to compare him to Ontario Premier Doug Ford and to former Prime Minister Stephen Harper. And I think that when you're looking at those big personalities, uh, you know, Harper, Ford, Trudeau, it can be very difficult for Andrew Scheer to create, you know, to carve out an identity for himself. Yeah. Uh, and I completely agree that um, if you don't, you know, if you don't set the narrative and say, this is who I am, then you let the other side do that for you. For sure. So why don't we move on and take a look at the, uh, the liberal mm -hmm. line next. I got into politics to help people, like the people I've served here in Papineau for more than a decade. People who work hard to make ends meet. Parents who want to build a better life for their kids. Canadians who want our country to stand for something positive in a world that's grown darker. Conservative politicians have a different approach. When we raised taxes on the wealthiest 1% so we could cut them for the middle class, they tried to stop us. When we created the Canada Child Benefit that gives hundreds of dollars a month tax-free to regular families across the country, they tried to stop that too. And now we've got a real climate plan that will reduce pollution and put more money in your pockets, and they're even trying to fight that. The Conservatives like to say they're for the people, but then they cut taxes for the wealthy and cut services for everybody else. In October, we've got a choice to make. Keep moving forward and build on the progress we've made, or go back to the politics of the Harper years. I am for moving forward for everyone. All right. So a very different ad than what different. we saw with Andrew totally. Scheer. Very different. He's got multiple locations. He's talking to people. 
uh, I would say it's quite a bit more polished than the conservative ad. Totally. Um, and, you know, I think that uh, there are very clear uh, signifiers about what he stands for. You know, he's, he's on a bus the whole time. Uh, you know, public transit uh, there is to represent not only, uh, you know, middle class families, but also uh, climate change and his policies there. Um, I think this is a very polished ad. I think it's really nice. And it's quite a bit more hopeful, I would say, than the conservative one. I think polished ads have always been a strength of Justin Trudeau mm -hmm. and, and the federal liberal party. Um, and I think that this ad hits that mark uh, completely. Um, that big difference, though, the different scenes and locations uh, integrated with people and the people that, uh, you know, when he talks about the child uh, benefit, mm -hmm. he's uh, in a setting with young parents and kids and mm -hmm. stuff. And it really drives home the impact of these specific policies, um, as well as, you know, getting in some core messaging that was successful, I think, in 2015, raising taxes on the 1%. Um, but now also, four years later, uh, being able to show and have the people around him mm -hmm. seeing how they're benefiting and living happily, mm -hmm. the impact or the result of that. Um, I also feel like he looks a little bit more mature in mm -hmm. this ad, maybe from four or five years ago. And uh, obviously age does that, but he seems very comfortable to mm -hmm. me in this ad in his role as prime minister. And being the prime minister and integrating in with the people, you know, no suit on, just a, a shirt, I feel like you get that kind of authenticity mm -hmm. that uh, maybe sometimes you get a little too much of that authenticity with Justin <laughs> Trudeau, but it shines across, I think, in this ad as well. And, what, to, and to, you know, to call back to um, an earlier conservative ad, uh, and to call back to an earlier conservative ad uh, where, you know, as you mentioned earlier, where uh, Sheer is really leaning over to shake people's hands. Mm -hmm. There are memes about about how far he was reaching to yeah. you know to shake somebody's hand. It, it you know made Andrew Sheer look a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and I think that you're totally right. In this ad, uh, Trudeau seems totally comfortable. You know, very very uh, um, very friendly with all the people that he's talking with. Mm -hmm. So that's really important that he directed, I think, directly to that audience. Um, but when he says the conservatives like to say that they're for the people, mm -hmm. that's not an Andrew Scheer slogan. That's a Doug Ford slogan. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to me that he's really trying to lump conservatives into one basket. Definitely. And if I were to look at this ad and say, who's Justin Trudeau running against? I might just say he's running against Doug Ford. Mm -hmm. So it seems like a very interesting strategy to me where when you couple that with some of the um, you know, oppo research and tactics that they've been deploying to discredit Andrew Scheer and bring up some of these social conservative issues, reopening a debate that we know is to be divisive amongst the electorate. It seems like they're trying to define him in that way mm -hmm. and then run against the unpopularity or perceived unpopularity of Doug Ford in yeah. Ontario. So overall, very, very strong. I guess the question is whether or not they can successfully pull off looking past and ignoring the SNC affair mm -hmm. and have Canadians buy what they're what they're selling here. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I think time will tell on that. I agree. And you know I think that the the biggest challenge for the Liberals right now is to turn this uh, into very much a two party election. Uh, right now, you know, uh, their their progressive base of supporters have two other options. They have the Greens and they have the NDP. And what Trudeau is trying to do right now is to say that uh, uh, voting liberal is the only way to beat the conservatives um, and to really prop up Andrew Scheer and to make him look as, uh, as, as strong as possible um, and, you know, to progressive voters as, uh, as, as threatening as possible by comparing him to um, everything that those progressive voters dislike about Doug Ford and disliked about former Prime Minister Stephen Harper. I agree with that. And I mean, it's not a new tactic by mm -hmm. any means, but if it's worked in the past, why not, yeah. why not try it again, <laughs> right? Um, so speaking of other parties, why don't we take a look at the NDP mm -hmm. next? Right. People tell me I'm different from the other leaders. And I am. I don't work for the wealthy and well-connected. I don't think government should be run for their benefit, like it has for decades. I believe that government should work for all of us. Investing in healthcare, cutting costs for families, and tackling the climate crisis. Not just saying the right things, 
but actually doing them. Now that's different. All right, mm -hmm. so short ad, uh, again, similar to the liberal ad surrounded with people, mm -hmm. um, maybe fewer people, but yeah. at least there's some people in there. It's not just Jagneet. <laughs> and there's um, a lot of kids in there too. Yeah. You know, he's, um, he's playing soccer with a group of kids. You know, there's, there's an adorable baby in there. Uh, he's really trying to appeal to young families. And I, I, I do like how he starts the ad off about being different. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that is, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know if challenge is the right word, but it's something obviously that uh, Jagmeet wants to face head on, that he's a mm -hmm. little bit different from the other leaders. Um, and he turns that really quickly into how the NDP is different, how they're mm -hmm. in it for you, mm -hmm. um, and how they're a different government. Um, one thing I, I don't know, it's it's hard for me to, to buy when politicians sell mm -hmm. being different and, yeah. you know, this government is in it for the government, but we're in it for you. I think voters see through that a little bit. Yeah. Every politician tries to talk about how they're different. Mm -hmm. And so that's a little bit of a challenge for me. The other, the other thing uh, for me is just like, where is Jagmeet Singh sometimes, right? <laughs> like, we just don't see him nearly as yeah. much as the other leaders. And I understand, obviously, that's the nature of uh, being the third party in the race. You don't, you don't get that kind of coverage. Mm -hmm. But I find it harder to then just pop up and show up in an ad mm -hmm. and have people just connect automatically when you say, we're different, we're mm -hmm. in it for you. The question in my mind is, okay, how, right? Mm -hmm. I may not, you know, the... Andrew Scheer may not like what I hear about him, and Justin Trudeau may not like what I hear about him when it comes to, you know, scandals or surfacing mm -hmm. videos or old speeches. But, but at, at least, least we're hearing, hearing about them, right? <laughs> and that's yeah. the thing. So we can take a look at the liberal ad and the conservative ad, and we can say, okay, like, are, is the electorate going to buy what they're trying mm -hmm. to sell or what they're trying to have people overlook? With, with this ad here from the NDP, I kind of feel like, okay, Jagmeet's trying to tell me that the NDP is different, that he's different, that they're in it for me, but there's zero how. There's yeah. no mention even in that ad of what they're going to do that's different. They're just saying, hey, we're different. And what's also interesting, uh, and this was uh, coming from the NDP media director, uh, what the NDP are trying to do with this ad is to position themselves as different from the liberals and the conservatives. Uh, to say, you know, we are a, um, a legitimate, we are a very credible third-party choice for Canadians. The interesting thing, though, is that this ad does not really, in my opinion, differentiate the NDP from their real opponent, their real threat in this election, which are the Greens. Um, I think that if you were to look at um, the NDP slogan, In It For You, there's nothing in that slogan that is... Uh, clearly identifiable with the NDPs, that slogan could have worked for anybody, any campaign, I think. Um, and I, I would, well, so what do you think? What do you think? Do you think that this, that this campaign ad does a good job of differentiating the NDPs in the field in general? Or do you think that they should have focused a bit more on differentiating themselves from the Greens? I think where the first ad we watched, the conservative ad, was trying to speak to all Canadians, and mm -hmm. I don't know how successful it might have been at that. And then the second ad, the liberal ad, was speaking to all Canadians, but very clearly speaking to the liberal base mm -hmm. and speaking to uh, Ontarians uh, and creating that contrast. The third ad, the NDP ad, to me, I, I don't know who the audience is for that. Mm -hmm. um, at least Andrew Scheer defines some of these pocketbook issues mm -hmm. as why you need to vote for him. And then Justin Trudeau defined kind of this scary conservative, mm -hmm. uh, you know, figure that will undo all of these things that this liberal government has done. But Jagmeet doesn't really define the what it is that yeah. he's going to do. You know, talking about audiences, I think that's an interesting uh, segue into the NDP's uh, Quebec ad, their, their uh, French language ad. Now, uh, normally, um, the, uh, each campaign would first shoot and script their English ad, and then uh, directly translate the English script into French, and then just you know put over a new uh, French voiceover onto uh, onto the video. The interesting thing that the NDP have done is they have shot an entirely new French ad, um, and actually reworked the intro to that script uh, to focus, I would say, much more on uh, cultural issues um, and uh, Jack meets uh, religion and 
direct contrast to uh, the Quebec Bill 21, their, secular, their secularism bill. Um, and I think that that is actually the, the stronger of the two ads from the NDP. And I'd like to take a, yeah, take a moment to look at it. Let's take a look at it. Great. Je ne suis pas comme les autres. Comme vous, mon identité, c'est ma fierté. Pas de cadeaux, pas d'héritage. J'ai assez connu les injustices pour savoir me battre. Et maintenant, je suis prêt à me battre pour vous. Pour affronter l'urgence climatique. Pour que les plus riches payent leur part. Et pas d'exception pour les pétrolières. L'avenir est trop important. C'est simple. Je m'appelle Dugny. Vous connaissez le PD. Maintenant, vous savez de quel bois je me chauffe. So, I mean, this ad, uh, I don't know what they're saying. I wish we had some <laughs> subtitles. But uh, speaking to it visually and just mm -hmm. the storyline of it, this is like a million times better. Mm -hmm. and this is almost the ad that Andrew Shear needs to run, where mm -hmm. you can see Jagme like, back from his Queen's Park days. Like, mm -hmm. you, if you work around or drive around Queen's Park Circle, you're bound to see, or you were bound to see, Jagmeet Singh coming to work on his bike mm -hmm. or riding around the city doing an errand on mm -hmm. his bike. And so seeing him on the bike, seeing him, you know, doing his, uh, his boxing, his martial arts, things that he's interested in, seeing him really tap into his culture and his mm -hmm. religion, um, you know, saying, you know, my, my, my culture and my identity gives me pride. And tying that into those visuals of him at mm -hmm. the pride parade there, it's really strong. And it represents that, I think, very progressive outlook mm -hmm. um, uh, that the NDP has adopted, not just today, but I think throughout their history mm -hmm. and those values and shows how their shared values that he has. So I, I really like this ad. It doesn't speak to all Canadians, for mm -hmm. sure. It speaks to progressives, particularly uh, in Quebec, and it defines him. Um, but it's the, I actually wish that he ran that ad in English and, and mm -hmm. didn't run the other ad at all, because this says something um, without says something even the words. We, we, like, I, I don't speak French, so I can't tell you what it says, but I got more out of it mm -hmm. without the words. And that's so telling that even without uh, perfectly understanding what he's saying, just the visuals are enough to give you a to be so much more meaningful for mm -hmm. you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think uh, if we could just take a, a quick moment to talk about Quebec, um, it, you know, it's the same thing with slogans. Uh, normally, you would uh, traditionally you would write an English slogan and then directly translate it into French, which is what all of the parties have done, with the exception of the Conservatives. So the Conservative uh, slogan. Um, is, uh, apologies, I'll just re re refresh my memory, uh, it's time for you to get ahead. But in French, their slogan is plus pour vous maintenant, more for you now. And that's a very interesting word choice, maintenant, for now. Because uh, the slogan for the Coalition Avenir Quebec uh, in their successful provincial election was maintenant. Uh, new ideas now, new party now, more for you now. And I think that when we're looking at how each of these parties are uh, presenting themselves in Quebec, I think that the Conservatives have done uh, the best in capitalizing and leveraging what's currently going on in Quebec uh, and applying that to a more targeted slogan there in a, in a very similar way to how the NDP have uh, made their French language at much more targeted. It's interesting to see uh, the parties really focus on Quebec as uh, separate a little bit from mm -hmm. the rest of the country in terms of, uh, you know, the values that they're hoping to align with through their ads, the slogans that they're using in the overall approach. And uh, I guess we'll see how, how it pays off. Um, do we have any more ads or is that... Mm, is so that uh, we don't have any more ads, but we do have one more slogan for the Greens. Okay. Um, it's a little wordy. It's uh, not left, not right, forward together. Uh, you can just imagine how long their, their French slogan is. Uh, but, you know, I think even though it's, it's the longest slogan, um, that to me is the clearest slogan about who we are and what we stand for. And honestly, it's the only slogan that if you were to throw all of these slogans in a hat and I pull it out, that's the only one that I could say, this is clearly the Greens. Because I think it really speaks to uh, the Green Party's willingness to work with whichever party is elected in October uh, to fight for the universal uh, crisis that is climate change. So that's that's an interesting perspective because uh, I, I find it 
fascinating fascinating because you know it's very rare then that a po- that a party or a leader or a politician uh, is willing to acknowledge uh, you know that they're not necessarily going to win mm-hmm. outright so mm-hmm. if that's the strategy for the greens to kind of frame themselves as a party that can work with anybody but very set on a particular agenda mm-hmm. how do you see that transcribing into votes to push them over the top in ridings and, and gain more seats mm-hmm. is this the right slogan is it defining it's not for me it's not defining the ballot box question at all mm-hmm. it's defining my uh, view whether or not i should vote green mm-hmm. and that's a little bit different than what the other parties are doing do you mm-hmm. think that that will pay off for them you know i think it will uh the elizabeth may has been quite clear about you know, she she has no illusions that she is going to uh, become the next prime minister. Um, I think I think we can all agree that that would uh, that's a very unlikely result for this election. Um, but instead, what she wants to do is raise the profile of climate change as the top issue for voters. Um, and I think that by uh, by positioning the Greens in this way as Effective, you know, I think she's what she's trying to do is establish the Greens as effectively a bipartisan uh, ballot for a lot of people so that uh, voters are able to say, you know, at the end of the day, climate change is what really matters. Uh, and, you know, uh, turn the ballot into, you know, you can vote liberal, you can vote conservative, but if you vote for Greens, then that shows uh, whichever government is elected that climate change is a very real issue, is a very serious issue that needs to be taken seriously. Uh, which what, with, with whatever policy, so long as it is taken seriously. I'm not sure how strong that approach is. Like, we'll, mm-hmm. I guess we'll see how it pays off mm-hmm. for the Green Party. Um, but they're in a good position right now. We're seeing, you know, a bit of a... I wouldn't call it a green wave, but I'd I'd say like climate change, and we track this on our on our platform, uh, is routinely a top three, top four issue in terms mm-hmm. of the overall Canadian conversation on a daily basis. Um, obviously, some people are for and some people are against certain uh, approaches to mm-hmm. climate change, like the carbon tax. Um, but I think it's the general awareness and interest that people have in the issue that's really fueling the Greens. Um, I agree. My, my, well, I was just going to say the, the worry for me would be for Jagmeet Singh, right? Mm-hmm. Like, is this a little bit of a one-two punch, right? Mm-hmm. Because if the Green Party is not trying to hammer on the, the progressive vote, right? Mm-hmm. Not left, not right, uh, forward. And if uh, Justin Trudeau and the Liberals are trying to eat that mm-hmm. progressive vote as much as possible, um, then are Where, the NDP, where's the opportunity uh, for the NDP? Yeah. And again, going back to kind of that undefined message, not really sure how they're mm-hmm. uh, in it for us or mm-hmm. how they're in it for you. Um, not really sure what they're going to do or who they're talking to. And now you have the Green owning an issue mm-hmm. and kind of like where, where's that space then for Jagmeet Singh? So yeah. I think that that may be from a, you know, a political strategy perspective is uh, whether or not intentional, I don't think it is by the Greens, but really further knocking down the NDP mm-hmm. in terms of their viability this election to be successful. I agree. I agree. So those are the first wave of ads. Uh, again, we're, we're about a week and a bit away from the official election period uh, starting, and uh, it'll be an interesting election. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, we don't need to place bets now on who will win, <laughs> but if we were to wager, I'd have my pick. I won't say it yet on camera. Um, <laughs> but I do think that this election, uh, the the elements, the boundaries for where this is going to play and what the arguments for and against are mm-hmm. for each of the leaders, unless something shocking happens, uh, something new, An it October seems surprise. like, yeah, well, it seems like it's increasingly defined, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So we kind of, I think, in these ads really solidify some of those positions. I'm really hoping to see another ad come out from the Conservative Mm -hmm. Party that does a little bit of a better job. I agree. I feel like uh, that was the weakest uh, of the three parties. Mm -hmm. Um, If you take the NDP's French ad, which I thought was Mm -hmm. very, very strong. Um, So I'd like to see something uh, come out that better defines Andrew Scheer as a leader. I agree. Um, and the liberal ad, I guess, we'll, we'll just wait and see if uh, the strategy to be Justin Trudeau 
um, and do that authentically and stick to the values of the party and the progress that's been made if voters can over can buy into that and overlook uh, some of the scandal that's mm -hmm. that's plaguing them especially in the last mm -hmm. uh, few months mm -hmm. I agree um, so with that thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you with the new episode next week great thank you very much